Welcome back, Bikeaholics. Ryan Erlacher here, lawabidingbiker.com. I always thank you for checking back in. In today's video, I'm gonna give you a real-world biker review on the new 2022 Harley-Davidson Lowrider ST. And don't get confused, because I'm sitting on a 2022 Street Glide ST, which Harley loaned me for 30 days, and I'm doing a complete and thorough review on this bike, too. It'll come out on this channel, so make sure you're subscribed and turn on those notifications so you know when I drop those videos. And just real quick, if you're new to the channel, I'm a full-time police motorcycle officer and instructor. In addition, I have several bikes and I ride a lot of miles off-duty, both street and adventure riding, so I hope all of that qualifies me to review the Lowrider ST. So I'm going to review the Lowrider ST from the perspective of an average everyday biker out there on the roads and what you actually need to know about the bike to help you decide if it's the bike for you or maybe something like this or maybe something smaller. At any rate, the Lowrider ST has caused quite a stir within the motorcycle community and in fact, it's selling so fast that it hardly ever sees the dealership floor. Yeah, and this beautiful location, I'm sitting five minutes out my back door, tons of spots like this, which is why I don't live in the big city. And with that said, I do have to leave here and go to a bigger city. Got to go to Santa Barbara, California, where I will be test riding and reviewing the Lowrider ST. So let's get it on. Now, I actually own a 2016 Dyna Lowrider S, and after that year, they moved to the Softail frame. My 2016 has the Screaming Eagle Twin Cam 110 cubic inch engine, and it's a ripper and so fun to ride. So I could only imagine how the 2022 Lowrider ST would handle and feel like with the Milwaukee 8 117 cubic inch engine. So Hardy Davidson had flown me to Santa Barbara, California, and I rode and reviewed the new 2022 Nightster the day before, along with other YouTubers in the motorcycle space. Make sure you check out my Nightster review video, as that is a ripper, and I did some serious corner carving on that little bike. I'll pop a card on the screen and put a link in the description below. The following day, I was to ride and review the Lowrider ST. I learned many things about the Lowrider ST from Hardy reps. So before we get riding and corner carving, I think we should talk about where the Lowrider ST spawned from. You see, in recent year, Hardy has been paying attention to the ever-changing demographics of Harley riders. Hardy spotted a trend and was seeing riders, especially in Southern California, tweaking the Lowrider S by increasing engine displacement, changing suspension, adding bags, and even fairings, just to name a few. And so armed with that information, Hardy Davidson set out to create a base model bike that was all of the above mentioned things, but yet came that way out of the box, so to speak. Thus, the Lowrider ST was born and came into existence with special care taken as to how it looked and rode. And the overall design was inspired by the iconic 80s FXRT. So with that said, there is only one way for us to find out what this bike is all about, and that is to ride it. Now, I was lucky and got one of only two bikes in the fleet that had the add-on Hardy-Davidson Rockford Fosgate interfering audio kit. And you better believe I tested that system well. And I will tell you all about it in this video. And I can't tell you how excited and humbled I was to get the opportunity to ride and review this bike. Now, full disclosure, yes, Hardy paid for my flight, hotel, and meals, but in no way was I paid for this review whatsoever. And Hardy has never told me what I can and can't say, or I simply would not do these reviews. And so as you've become accustomed to on this channel, you'll always get an honest, real-world biker review. Okay, let's ride this thing already, huh? All right, just real quick, we'll get right back into the review. Before you leave the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and bell icon every time those are hit. Another biker joins the revolution, and we would love to have you be part of it. Oh, and once I reach 200,000 subscribers, I'm going to release my full Sturgis documentary on this channel for free. If you want it now, I'll put a link in the description below. All right, beautiful morning here in Santa Barbara, and behind me are the Harley Lowrider STs. That said, we're going to get geared up and get riding here right away this morning. All right, get 
putting this show on the road. Doodle, you can sit almost flat footed. Yes. How tall? I'm five three point seven five. Oh, 0.75, yeah. wow, okay. So there you go. Doodle on a motorcycle. You having fun? That's my favorite bad yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Cool. So getting out on the freeway here, doing about 70. And uh, they built this fairing to be very, it's a frame mounted fairing. So it doesn't turn with your bars. It's more like their road glide. They've got that uh, duct in the front and then uh, two ducks on the side and it really uh is made to deflect the wind and create a pocket for the rider and i'm getting very really no buffeting at all there are different size windshields that you can put on this bad boy a wind deflector a real short one and then a taller one i think this is the mid-size and my height at 5'8 Everything's getting deflected up and over my helmet. I'm not getting any helmet buffeting. All right, so I know it's weird and strange, but the first thing I want to talk about on this bike is the audio system because I did get one of the bikes with the audio system. So we'll start there. Now, this doesn't come standard with the ST. It's a hardy part, it's add-on. It replaces this whole inner fairing with the audio system. It's a Rockford Fosgate five and a quarter inch speakers up there in the dash as you can see and then separate one inch tweeters and there is no stereo head unit there's a you can either just bluetooth it or there's also a harley davidson audio app that you can download on your smartphone and really the bluetooth uh, is in the amp itself and so you're just connecting via bluetooth and you can run it uh, directly from your phone. The nice thing about the Harley-Davidson audio app is that it'll have auto volume control uh, so that when you you know you speed up it gets louder and whatnot. So I just tested it. I can't let you listen to it because I'll get a copyright strike on my channel. I don't want that. Um, but we're cruising at about 70 down the freeway here. My full face helmet with the shield closed. I turned it all the way up and it is super super clean sounding the volume all the way up on my phone crystal clear and i didn't uh, have any problems hearing it again full face helmet so that was one of the things i wanted to test it is a plug and play so if you get it it is just removal and plug and play maybe at some point on the channel we'll do an install on one but uh, in briefing this morning, Blockhead did say that uh, Rockford Fosgate does make a handlebar mount control that you can plug into the system uh, that will give you the ability to skip through songs and I think it has volume up and down on it, but you could just mount it to your handlebars. I wasn't aware of that, so that's good information. But you will be very pleased if you get one of these. I would definitely recommend adding that on. You will not be disappointed. And of course, listening to audio, you're gonna need a cell phone mount. And there is no better cell phone mount on the market than the Biker Gripper, the strongest, sexiest, sleekest cell phone motorcycle mount on the market. That's right, sold right in the Law Abiding Biker Store. I'll link to it in the description below. There's plenty of bar if you wanna get our bar mount version, or you can get the control cluster version either side. Get your phone set up there uh, so that you can see what music you're playing. You can skip through songs and all that. Tried and tested by the Law Abiding Biker Crew over thousands and thousands of miles. It has our definite stamp of approval. I've seen it go through adventure riding crashes and road crashes and the cell phones did not come out. 18 pounds grip strength on that bad boy. So get hooked up with the Biker Gripper if you're gonna run this uh, system. So, this bike coming with cruise control, absolutely awesome. And we're at about 70, and it's tracking real nice. My hands are off the handlebars. So, just kind of sit back, and I'm just holding my weight here centered. Tracking very true. 
and straight. It just feels solid. Everything's very tight. Let's talk about the powertrain. Of course, coming with the Milwaukee 8 117. V-twin air and oiled cool. Putting out 103 horsepower and 125 foot-pounds of torque. And if you're experienced with the big V-twins, uh, this one's no different, or you've had experience with the Milwaukee 8. You want to get it in, right in that, uh, you know, above 3,500 RPM to get in that power band. I'm at uh, about 3,500, 36 in third gear at 65, and you can roll it, and that's where that power band is. So, as to be expected, on this motor. Let's talk about weight of this bike. Coming in at 721 pounds. Now, the Street Glide ST comes in at 814 pounds. So that's, I don't know if my math is right, what is that, 93? This bike here is 93 pounds lighter or wet than the Street Glide ST with the same exact motor. Just a lot lighter bike with the same powertrain, six-speed transmission, of course. So we kind of hit a back road here, so what better time than to talk about suspension? Because we're hitting lots of bumps and some potholes and things. The ST coming with 43 millimeter single cartridge inverted front forks. And it's handling all this real well. Now the rear is a coil over monoshock, I believe, 53 millimeters of stroke which is uh, converts about 2.2 inches of travel and it actually feels very good for stock suspension on a lot of these bumps here so let's talk about rider triangle a little bit here now on the regular lowrider s you sit back a little bit more a little bit more of cruiser maybe style they made this bike so you sit up more and over the bike which i really like uh, because i i like to ride aggressive and it puts you in a better aggressive riding position the seat really uh, solo seat comes on it here for single rider and it slopes up in the back and it's got some good back support when you reef on that throttle that definitely keeps you from going back and it gives you a little support back there I will say the first thing I noticed on this bike when I got on it was that the pegs the mid controls are higher than I expected so what I mean by that is my knees are up higher up on the tank here uh, than what I expected so that that was interesting and I'm sure that has something a guy 5'8 like me it's not uncomfortable I mean mid controls definitely aren't as comfortable as something like my street glide where you have floorboards and highway pegs and all that kind of stuff but and I think they probably raised them, you know, to get some of the lean angle, which is 31 degrees. The lean angle is what they're saying on this bike. All right, and just real quick, we'll get right back into your video. As you can imagine, a lot of man hours and expenses go into keeping this channel going strong. There is a way you can support us by becoming a patron member. I will link to it in the description below. There are benefits for becoming a member, such as t-shirts and stickers. You get access to the private Facebook group, which is a troll-free zone. It is nothing but bikers helping bikers in there. You get access to live video broadcasts and chat, podcasts early, access to premium videos up on request, and of course, access to those ride meetups and events. We definitely appreciate you considering supporting us by becoming a patron member. All right, let's get back into your video. And of course, if I didn't mention on the motor, you've got your uh, heavy breather there on the 117 it's not bothering with my leg at all uh, I'm not even hitting it of course we got the mid controls so kind of keeps my legs back from it and as far as rider feedback on the bike 
uh, it's surprising. They, uh, you know, that's something that Harley has done over the years is taken away a lot of the vibration of the old bikes and things like that. But they've really been, you know, somewhat meticulous to get rider feedback and what riders really want. I do want to feel my bike. I want to still feel the mechanics on my bike. And so when I just shifted down there, you know, I could feel it shifting in the clutch handle a little bit. Um, I'm actually getting more vibration through the handlebars and the hand grips uh, and through the uh, mid controls, my feet on the pegs. So it's not too much. It's just definitely uh, more than I expected, but in a good way. beautiful little road but the suspension is handling it really good so pretty standard uh, you know aluminum housings uh, all your controls are very familiar signal cruise control resume set all that really nicer on the left of course you've got your mode button which we'll talk about in a minute horn and then brights and lights all that kind of stuff and then over here on the right side you've got your run stop hazards and then a, uh, your uh, start button obviously over here so of course this mode button over here that controls the 2.1 inch LCD screen which sits down here uh, in your handlebar clamp and of course on that uh, is your gas your fuel gauge and your miles per hour what gear you're in and then your mode button on the left handlebar, you can toggle through some different information. Of course, your mileage, uh, your trip, uh, or uh, you know, if you want to take a trip. You've got your remaining miles to fuel and your clock. And then RPMs, which is what I keep it on most of the time. But that's what that little ride mode button does and it just all displays down here as you're doing that. And then you've got another gauge down here, which has some dummy lights and it says I'm in cruise control right now, or at least it's on. And uh, your bright indicator and all that kind of stuff. All right, so this bike coming with stock hard saddlebags. They are uh, the clamshell type. I prefer the top loaders, uh, but uh, you still got some storage space in there. Very quick to detach. All right, so since it is kind of in the middle, that sport touring, coming with a five gallon fuel tank, and they're saying under premium conditions, 43 miles per gallon if you're running her nice and easy. Respectable. Of course, the full touring coming with the six gallon, your street glides and your road glides. And the bike coming with cast wheels, bronze, of course, that color that we've come to expect that kind of represents the low rider. 16 inch in the front, 110 in uh, width millimeters, and then the rear is a 19 at uh, 180 millimeters wide. It is coming with an LED headlight, but they uh, did not put LED in the signals. And as far as the solo seat goes, I will say, it's one of the most comfortable stock Harley seats that I've ever sat on. I guess I wasn't expecting that, but it's got some good cushion to it. All right, so this bike uh, not coming with any rider modes, no rain road, uh, sport, nothing like that. Um, not coming with traction control. It does come standard ABS. None of the other rider uh safety enhancements none of those features could they put it on it of course would bring price up they are pretty cool especially you know the one thing i will say for a, you know a new rider uh that's not experienced with you know spinning the back wheel or it's spinning um or braking in rain or less than desirable roads but Anyways, enough about that topic, but I know that's going to be a complaint of a lot of people. So I'm here with uh, Brad Richards, a Vice President of Styling and Design, correct? Yep. At Harley-Davidson. 
We're test riding and reviewing the Lowrider ST today. A couple questions I have is mostly about accessories. Um, so are there accessories for the spike, such as things like uh, crash bars? And then if you could talk about the rear setup, luggage rack solution, since it is a sport touring, what options do people yeah. have for that? Well, the cool thing about Lowrider ST is it's a member of the Softail family, and we have a pretty wide range of uh, parts and accessories, you know, nice suite of parts already in, in existence on, you know, for this particular motorcycle. Um, so yeah, so luggage racks, um, backrests, you have seating options for folks, you know, um, depending on the comfort level uh, or, or the style that they're trying to emulate and create with the motorcycle. Um, there is, there's also crash bars. There's a, it's called a flat out bar, but it's a, it looks almost like some of the bars that the stunt guys are using, but it's, a, it's forward mounted in front of the, of the, the, the motor and it does a great job of protecting um, the bike if it were to, to go over. And are they making a forward control kit for this bike yet? Um, th I th there is a forward control kit in the Softail family because we have bikes that have forward controls. So um, I, th I do believe there's a kit as well. Yeah. Okay. The bike is set up solo seat. That's correct. And Com comes from the factory solo seat, just rider pegs. But you can get a, a kit for rear uh, for two up riding as oh, well. Oh, you can. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Very cool. There yeah. you go. Thanks, Brad. You bet, man. This is a blast riding these corners hard. there on the road. Oh, this spike is a fun one for do some real canyon carving on this bad boy. Oh yeah, and peg all the way down on that one. I don't think I mentioned that uh, uh, I'm 5'8", and I don't have to choke up on this bike at all. It, I can sit all the way back in the saddle with my butt up against uh, where the seat actually curves up and gives some support, and I've still got a little bend in my arms. And as far as brakes, you've got dual front uh, disc brakes rotors and a single rotor in the rear, and I've jammed on the brakes pretty good, did some threshold braking front and rear and it's very sufficient stopping uh, power for this size bike the way they have it set up. So still riding the STs but a uh, quick stop for lunch at Cold Springs Tavern. Looks like a pretty cool place. 
All right, Blockhead, what do you think uh, so far of the Lowrider ST? Yes, Lowrider ST, loving it. Increased suspension, awesome, incredibly noticeable as compared to the last 2020, or the 2020 that I have, the Lowrider S. Uh, the fairing blocking the wind, no buffeting, feels nice and smooth. Um, performance of the 117 is awesome. I don't know. That's a great bike. I want it. And we still got some more riding to do after lunch here. Yeah. Blockhead, check out his channel. Yee. All right, here with uh, Matt Laidlaw. What are your first impressions here of the Lowrider ST? Uh, so far, I love it. I mean, you're basically taking the Lowrider S and you're just making it a lot more versatile I mean, with the bags and the fairing. And really, you're, you're making it a touring-oriented bike now, and I'm, that's no surprise to anybody. But, you know, the fairing was good as far as, you know, the wind deflection properties on it. I personally would probably use a little bit taller windshield just because of my height, obviously. But, I mean, just the quality and everything, too. You know, for the longest time we've seen in the aftermarket world, a lot of guys making these fairings and bolting them up to the Dynas and the, and the modern soft tails. And to have something of this quality come from the factory already on the bike and have all the benefits of the warranty and everything is, is pretty awesome. Yep. Awesome, man. Good first impressions. Matt Laidlaw, Laidlaw to Harley Davidson. Check out his YouTube channel, doing a lot of cool stuff over there. Later, guys. Thanks, Ryan. So these, haven't shown you, are the locking clamshell style saddlebags. Of course, this is the right one, so it's shorter than the other one. But still, decent amount of room to pack stuff. I will. Uh, as far as the clutch, it is a cable clutch. And I can't remember if it was 20 or 21. The full touring models anyways had hydraulics, but they went back to cable. Now, this is my personal opinion. I'm a motorcycle officer and instructor, and I can ride courses the same with cable or hydraulic. I do prefer hydraulic, and I'll tell you the reason why, is that they're very consistent and they're an easier pull uh, you can also add on like the AIM Light Force Slave Cylinder that we sell in our store to make it even less pull. And I did an install video on that, by the way. I'll link to it in the description below on how to install that. But really, you're stuck with the cable and the hydraulic is good for the life of the clutch. There's no adjustments. But uh, with cable, especially when you're doing a lot of maneuvers and drills, you're constantly having to adjust the cable clutches so for that reason i just, and again that's personal i wish they would just go all the way around to hydraulic clutches i prefer it i can jump on the same model bike of any bike uh, and it's going to be the same pull it's going to be very consistent and again just they're an easier pull and you get less hand fatigue oh yeah nice little twisties there Fun. All right, and definitely did some peg dragon today. Wore it down good. They do have little studs that go in there. It's a little uh, protective studs basically they drag before the actual peg but they took them out on these bikes which is nice because it gives a little more lean angle but that's what results as you get into the peg that right there means a fun day of riding some twisties all right so the last test we have to do is slow speed maneuvering maneuverability of the bike uh, we'll just do some basic police motor drills just maybe some figure eight some full bar lock turns Feel how it's balanced and kind of feel how the clutch is on this bike for uh, low speed maneuvering. So there's full bar lock. To the left here. To the right. Our left here, here, full bar lock. Not a great, very shallow gray area on this bike. That's full bar lock as I'm doing these drills here. Very touchy gray area. But I spent more time on the bike to do it a lot faster. And back over. I'm getting comfortable with it now. There we go. Alright, there we go. 
All right, so I had an absolute blast riding the Lowrider ST today. You can see the smile on my face. It's not going to go away for a while. Uh, we rode out uh, uh, outside the greater Santa Barbara area. Um, this bike is super fast, super nimble, and I really enjoyed it in the twisties, uh, getting down low and dragging those pegs. What can I say? It was just a blast. And of course, this coming with the all familiar uh, big V-twin air and oil cooled and uh, handled like we've come to expect from the Milwaukee 8. I did really like the ducts that they put and the way that they designed that fairing. It really does create a wind tunnel around you and really minimized buffeting. Uh, that was definitely apparent today when I was riding it. So who's this bike for? Well, I think it's for a lot of different riders. Uh, it comes in at a lot less price point than like a street glide or a road glide. And you literally could tour on this bike um, and go long distance on it. And then uh, you could have uh, strip it down, strip the bags off real quick and uh, take it out local or like we did today and do some canyon carving. So kind of two purposes and again, a cheaper price point to get you in the touring market, so to speak. And as you've come to expect on the Law Abiding Biker channel, you're gonna get an honest review and there's always cons to a bike. But with that said, this is gonna get a little bit picky and can come down to personal preference. The one thing is aesthetics. And what I mean is they have the two uh, true dual exhaust coming out the right side of the bike and that one bag is shorter on the right side and it just looks a little off when you're behind it. But again, that's just a personal thing and that's definitely not a reason that I wouldn't uh, buy this bike. And the other nitpicky thing I have is, this is a fairing bike, it's a sport touring. And I just think it should come out of the factory with engine guards because at some point you're gonna slip your foot in oil or gravel and you're gonna dump this thing. And without engine guards or something to protect, you're gonna cause a lot of damage. But of course you can add it on after you buy the bike. And the other nitpicky thing, it's coming with an LED headlight and taillight, yet we've still got halogen bulbs in the signals. Now, I always like to have another bike on the market to compare to, and I will say that it's very hard in this case because the Lowrider ST is so unique. But for argument's sake, I'll loosely compare it to the Indian Chief Dark Horse. The Lowrider S is starting at $21,750, while the Dark Horse is starting at $17,500 and has a 116 cubic inch engine, while the Lowrider ST has a 117 cubic inch engine. The Dark Horse has 79 horsepower with 120 foot pounds of torque, and the Lowrider ST has 103 horsepower with 125 foot pounds of torque. Now, to make the Dark Horse somewhat comparable, you'll need to add at least a windshield for 743 and saddlebags for 1,280. And that would then make the starting price 19,533, which still makes it $2,227 less than the Harley, but without a fairing and lesser performance of the two engines. At the end of the day, if you decide to get the Lowrider ST, you will not be disappointed. And I think Harley is gonna sell the heck out of these things. And having ridden this bike today, I will tell you that I have a 16 Dyna Lowrider S up at the Law Abiding Biker Studio. And it's really made me think about it might be time to trade that bike out. We like to bring bikes through to do different projects and stuff. Who knows, we'll see. Maybe you'll end up seeing one of these in the studio. All right, your journey's not done on the channel. I'm gonna pop a couple videos on the screen here for you. Hopefully some useful or entertaining, heck, maybe both. At any rate, when you're done watching videos, make sure you get out there and ride every chance you get, bikeaholics. Peace.